Lord said, Amen. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and the saints of God should rejoice and be glad there in it. And I don't know how you feel about it, but God did not have to wake us up this morning. It was all because of his grace uh, and his mercy and his loving kindness towards us that we are here clothed in our right mind with the full activity of our limbs. And because of that, I just think all of us ought to just go ahead on and give God a hand clap of praise. Uh, Truly, you have a jewel of a pastor in uh, Reverend uh, Philip Hickman. Uh, He uh, he has been a constant uh, these past three years uh, in our uh, journey with church plant ministry. Uh, He's proven himself to be a friend, a very dear friend and brother. And uh, because of him, uh, uh, Legacy Baptist Church uh, has embraced Greater Love Mission Church wholeheartedly. And I just thank God, uh, not only for him, but also for you, Legacy Baptist Church. Go on and give yourself a great big amen. Um, uh, And I cannot talk about uh, Brother Philip without talking about his darling wife, Carrie. Uh, She's very sweet, and she's just been so kind uh, uh, to us. Uh, My wife is here with me, a wife of 24 years, my sweetheart for 24 years. Uh, Sister Dee Dee McCall, she's here this morning. Amen. (laughs) Listen, it's not my intentions to keep you too long because uh, uh, there's a lot uh, that's going on today, and I'm just so grateful to God uh, that God is allowing us to partner in, in such a grand way to blend fellowships and blend congregations so that we can get an idea of what heaven is going to look like. Amen. Amen. So we're so grateful to God for all of what he's doing in the life of the church and uh, of the believers. But there is a passage of scripture that I would like to lift with your permission, uh, found in the proverbial passage. That's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And for contextual purposes, I'm may very well uh, touch on verses 4, 1 through 4. But for our hearing this morning, I would like to raise this text. That's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It's a marvelous text. We tend to pull it out of our pockets whenever we are disturbed or whenever we are confused about the direction or decision Making, we tend to grab this text very often, and it says here, verse 5 and 6, and I will raise it in the English Standard Version. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will. Make straight your paths. Uh, Just for a moment, with your permission, I would like to talk about, for subject matter, what it means to trust God. What it means to trust God. Trust is an obvious truth that all of us have in common The reason is every human executes trust in something or someone, whether we know it or not. For example, most of us walk into buildings trusting in the architect who designed the building and the contractor and workman who constructed the building In the quality and durability that makes up the building, and we never gave it a thought. We place mail into the mailbox, make bank deposits, watch or read news bulletins. Without realizing it, we have just demonstrated our trust 
In the post office, the bank, and the news reporter. We even go to the doctor who prescribes medication for us by scribbling on a piece of paper. And the paper that we have, we don't understand it, but we take this piece of paper and bring it to the pharmacist, who in turn pour pills and portions into a bottle. And just like the doctor said, we take one three times a day, trusting and hoping that the medication will cure our sickness. Without giving it any thought, we have just exercised our trust in the doctor and the pharmacist. But the question is this morning, how many of us truly and unequivocally put our trust in God. Now, I just believe if we can put our trust in the architect, the news reporters, and the building of the builder, the builders of the building, the post office, and uh, the doctors and pharmacists, with, certainly, with, with certainty and crystal clear clarity, we should be able to trust in our God. Amen. Well, it's here in chapter 3 of Proverbs, we are instructed and uh, enlightened on the rewards of wisdom and what it really means to trust in God. Well, it's right here in the immediate context in verse 1 where Solomon says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Now, if we're going to establish trust in the Lord, we must first remember God's word. Uh, the way that our Lord God proves his trustworthiness is in and through his holy word. The biblical principles and precepts that are connected to his promises. But it's in my observation of this particular text, I noticed uh, verses 1 through 4, how the odd verses 1 through 3, God provides us with principles and precepts. But then in the even verses, verses 2 through 4, he seals the principles and precepts with his promises. And beloved saints of God, what I find out, whenever... We're trusting God for direction. God will instruct us to do some things in order that we might get the promises. And what I find out is that through the word of God, God unveils his general and his special revelation of who he is, his capabilities, and the wondrous works that he can perform through and in his word. So it's through the word of God that we find that we serve a God who is trustworthy. So it's here, as we peruse the parameters of this particular passage, it's in verse 5, where we find that now that we realize that we serve a God who is trustworthy, we can rely upon his refuge. For the text says, in verse number five, we are told, first of all, who to trust in. Listen to it. It says, trust in the Lord. Notice the word trust. It means to be confident or secured. Uh, what I love about uh, the, the Old Testament, uh, which is written in its original language, is written in Hebrew. It's a language of pictures. So when we talk about trust, it's a definition. Uh, 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 the Hebrew writer paints a picture of one who is confident, one who can rely, but also it means to be secure. 
So here, the Hebrew writer paints a picture about us being able to rely upon God to be our protector in our shield in the time of life storms. Now, one would ask, well, what do you mean, uh, Brother McCall, when you say storms? Well, storms uh, has a way of popping up in our life by way of trials, tests, and tribulations. And what I love about God, now that he's proven himself through the word of God, that we can rely upon him to be our refuge, what God does in the times of storm, he provides the protection that we need to make it through life difficult times. And I'm so glad this morning that I realized and I've come to the realization through the word of God that we serve a God who's an on-time God. It doesn't matter what your situation may be, whatever you are going through, we serve a God who not only provides protection, but he's a God of provision and he is a God of peace. And what I love about him, there are times when the storms of life begin to rage. What God does, he just speaks to the storm and make the winds and the rain behave. Amen. We serve a God not only uh, that we can rely upon in our refuge. The text not only tells us who we should trust. Now what I notice. Uh, beloved saints uh, here at Legacy and visiting friends. But I notice about the text, it tells us who to trust in. Did you notice that the text did not say to trust in our own personal ability? You notice the text did not say to trust in man. But the text says, it tells us who to trust in. It says trust. In the Lord, definite order. Well, what do you mean the Lord? Well, the supreme ruler and creator of heaven and earth. The one who just spoke everything into existence. The one who scooped the dust from the ground and formed man. And man became a living soul. The one who performed the only surgery of its kind by going into man and exegeting from man from his rib and creating one man then closing him up. The God who sits high and looks low. The God who is in control of life as we see it. The God that we know who has the whole world in his hand. That's who the text tells us to trust in. But not only, only uh, Brother Philip, does the text tell us who to trust in, but it also tells us how we should trust. Trust in God. He says to do it with all our heart. Now here comes the challenge. Here comes the challenge in the text. Because the text is telling us this morning that not all, trusting God uh, encompasses much more than just us Receiving from God, but also the saints of God releasing of our life to God. When it suggests our heart, it means our heart body, our mind, and our soul. The question is, can God trust us to give of ourselves to him as he commands us to do so. Paul writes in his letter to the Romans church, chapter 12, verse 1, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship, releasing of ourselves to God. Now, when we give up ourselves to God, it's just my belief, and maybe I'm a little bit slow, I don't know, but I just believe. When we just release of our first release of ourselves to God, then our material possessions 
will never be a problem. Amen? Amen. And God requires, before we can give him anything, he requires us to give of ourselves to him. So trusting God in compass, remembering the word of God, relying upon God's refuge, but releasing our life to God. But it's in the B clause of this verse where the greatest challenge comes. And it says here, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In order to trust God, we have to learn to practice to renounce self Reliance. You know, I, 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 what God would do, you know, I, I, God is a God of humor. And, and I believe there are times he, he just allows us. He sit back on his golden throne and uh, the throne in heaven and he just watch us as we think as if we have it all together. <laughs> and, and I just believe uh, it, it, it's not by accident that God has drawn a line to decide that most of us are only going to go so far. We're only going to have so much. We're only going to know uh, so much as far as our intellect and ascertaining education because many of us just can't handle it. Soon as we get maybe just a few extra dollars in the bank and we're able to save a little bit more money, then we begin to pop our collar and think it's all about us. (laughs) But it's only until God, through his permissive will, allow the money to become funny, the bank accounts to become empty. It's the the times when, even with all of the education and all of the degrees we've ascertained, there are times when God will, through his perfect will and plan, He will still allow us to be limited just to show us that we cannot make it on our own. And for me, I've just learned in everything I do to include God in it. Matter of fact, even when I wake up in the morning, it's uh, through my prayer and devotion that I ask God to go with me wherever I'm going. And can I just drop a little something uh, as a sidebar? If God can't go with you, then it's a sign that wherever you're going, you shouldn't go. (laughs) Amen. Renounce. Self-reliance. Now, those people who are foolish enough to think that they can live Life without God really flirts with idolatry, making himself a man-made God. And last I knew that God will have no other God. And man will never be able to take his glory. And just to prove even more how We shouldn't allow, and we should always renounce self-reliance. I believe it's in the gospel, according to John, where it's Jesus before embracing his passion, before Jesus was headed to the cross to die for your sins and my sins. He took time out to speak to his disciples by encouraging them of the importance of staying connected to him. He says in verse 4 of chapter 15, verse 4 and 5, he says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in them, he is that 
He is, it is he that bears much fruit. But here it is. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus commands his disciples to renounce self-reliance. I find when I'm at the end of myself and uh, I'm losing strength is when God unveils himself to me even more. That's why we can say greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. With God, all things are possible. Without God, we are doomed to fail, we are doomed to falter, and we are doomed to blunder. That's why it's important in our daily walk with God to make it a point to renounce self-reliance. Now, giving consideration to the context of the text, which I read in verse 1, uh, there's, there's another way that we should also renounce self-reliance. And that is as it relates to making the, God, making the word of God say what we want it to say to justify our selfish ideology, psychology, and philosophy and philosophical ideas, like one would say. The Word of God, when it's used properly, can be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. But there's this, there's this thing that, that's called reader's intent, where believers take time out to copy and paste the word of God to suit their own fleshly desires. And for that reason, many of times, we find ourselves in a world of trouble. That's why Paul encouraged Timothy. He said, Timothy, I need you to study to show thyself a proven unto God. A workman needed not be ashamed so that you can rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly divided is the idea of a tailor uh, cutting the pattern straight. And what I've noticed and what I've enjoyed, whenever you cut the word straight, there are times it may cut us straight. But blessed be the Lamb of God. Uh, uh, God knows what we need, when we need it, and how we need it. So therefore, we should take the word of God for what it is. The word of God can perform surgery, but it's a surgery that helps and not hinder our life. Bless God. It helps us. A surgery that helps and, and not hinder. A surgery that heals us in the areas where we are in need of it most. Trust God by renouncing self Reliance. So we found out what it means to trust God. We found out that we should, first of all, remember the word of God, rely upon God's refuge, release of our life to God, and renounce self-reliance. But this last point as I close this message, not only should we renounce self-reliance, but we should recognize divine direction. It baffles me a lot of times. Many of us say what we don't, what we want, and how we desire God's direction. But when we really give thought to it, we really reject it. Well, how is that so? Every time the man of God or you're listening to the preach word, this is how God gives us divine direction. But the question is, are we really listening 
Are we adhering to what the Word of God is telling us? See, God gives that right direction by, by His instructions in righteousness. You know, we, we can live a purposeful life if only we just take time out to tune in to what's being heard and said through the Word of God. So we can't talk about getting divine directions without talking about our faith. Amen? So one would ask, how can we ascertain faith? Well, I'm glad you asked. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, which would suggest if we are lacking in faith, what it means is we just need more word. That's why for that reason, we cannot afford to miss out on the recharge Wednesday night Bible studies. We cannot afford to miss out on the, the life groups because in the life groups and in recharge, the word of God is going forward in such a, a magnanimous way. It, it, it's the way that God pours into us to direct us to where he desires for us to go. It's through the word of God that God helps us to get to his intended destination. Not ours, but his intended destination. There was a young boy who was fascinated with the telephone man. He thought it was amazing how fast the phone man hustled up and down the pole. The boy was captivated by how good the man was at doing his job, but it was one day uh, the telephone man had an opportunity to explain to the young boy uh, how there was a time when climbing the pole, he would not trust in the belt that he wore. Uh, this belt that he wore provided the security while he was operating on the wires in the phone line. He said, uh, I wouldn't allow myself to trust the belt, and as a result, I would use my arms and hand and end up getting a bunch of cut scrapes and splinters, all because I would not rely and trust the belt for safety. So it is with so many of us. Because of our refusal and our reluctancy to truly trust God, we end up in life getting splinters, cuts, and bruises because we fail to trust God. But I've learned that no matter what life may bring my way, whatever life might allow, God allow uh, life to bring my way, that I can explicitly trust in God. So here I tell you, in order to relieve ourselves of the splinters and the bruises that life might bring, and, and might be the result of us failing to trust God. Learn to trust and lean and depend upon God more in every situation. I remember when my mother was in the hospital. And as she was awaiting surgery to have her leg amputated because of her complications of diabetes. As I sat down pondering what she was thinking, I asked her, I said, what's going through your mind? Knowing that after this surgery, the legs that you've had for 56 years, you're going to be minus one. And my mother looked at me with all of the confidence in her face that she could have, and she said, well, son, if I could trust God for 56 years to give me two legs, well, the same God 
I will trust without a shadow of a doubt with only one. And there are times in trusting God, God will remove some things in our life that we've become so comfortable with. But should it mean, or does that mean that we're supposed to compromise our trust in God? God is the same God who's able to provide us with things. And, uh, uh, and he's the same God who, uh, who's able to, to take us through life's difficult moments. Uh, even when he decreased in our lives, the things we are used to having, he's still a God that's worth trusting. Amen. So I've learned that through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. And it's through the word of God that we can get all of the help we need and the direction for Christ-like living. So I would submit to you today to remember the word of God. Rely upon God's refuge. Release your life to God. Renounce self-reliance. And recognize divine direction.